Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I received from our dear brother. Then we had to translate the message that he sent to me. This is the narration of that message that he sent to me. The translation reads like this. Hello my brother, how are you? I want to tell you a story that happened to my dear sister. This sister of mine, she was staying there and working in South Africa. Currently, I am based here in my home country, which is Zimbabwe. So this sister of mine, when she had gone there to South Africa, she then started dating another man and they decided that they were going to stay with each other as man and wife. When we heard that she was staying with the man as a family, we then decided that we were going to support their relationship. This man, even though we didn't even know him, we do not know any of his relatives. All that we know is that the man came from an area which is here in Zim that is called Chiredzi. That is the information that we have now when these two people entered into their relationship that they called a marriage even though they didn't get married according to our African tradition. They were just staying with each other. They were fighting each other like no man's business. Almost on a daily basis, we would receive a phone call coming from South Africa. You would receive messages as well from South Africa. Sometimes it will be my sister who will be the one that will be complaining that your so-called husband was the one who was busy messing up their relationship on another account. It will be our so-called son-in-law calling us, telling us that my sister was the one who had the problem in their relationship. Relationship. Yet they claimed that they loved each other so much. We tried to make their relationship to work. We tried to give them advice, but still, no matter how hard we tried, it did not even work. These two people kept on fighting like they were cats. And at the time when my sister fell sick, I suspected that it was because of some internal injuries, because of the way that these men used to beat her up when these two people would be fighting. What the man that she was staying with used to do is that he would never think of the fact that he was fighting with a woman who was less powerful than he was physically. He would beat her up as if he was fighting with another man. Looking at that situation as a family, that was when we decided to let our relative know that we were no longer in support of her relationship with that man, but she was a woman who was in love, who loved her husband. No matter how hard we tried to force her to leave a toxic marriage, but she would say, yes, I still love him. Sometimes she would say, I do not love him anymore. When and you will be questioning her, but soon after she will start speaking with her husband again. She will do some things that you will be left with so many questions because the next thing she will call you and she will tell you that she has moved back with her husband. And when these two people were in love, when you try to give one person advice, then the next thing when they would return back together, it will be like it's you who was the problem. The moment that they start staying together it will be like it is you who is the enemy. There was one time when my sister had returned back home from South Africa when she had returned back home I saw that physically she was not okay. She was a woman who seemed to have been recently beaten up. She had been beaten up and this was not good. We saw that this was not okay at all. We then decided that if these two people were going to stay together any longer they were going to kill each other because they could not even love each other even though they had claimed that they loved each other but they didn't love each other they were just being toxic towards each other we then chose to tell our sister that she could not go back to her husband a so-called husband who was there in south africa she said that it was okay but she then ran away and she returned back to south africa she was now staying with her husband again so 
we told her as a family that we do not want to hear anything from her anymore, anything that has to do with her love life or anything that had to do with that man that she had chosen over her family. We did not want to hear anything, so we then chose to abandon her. We ignored her, and she continued to suffer in that toxic relationship that she had chosen to return back to. So even if she had something that she wanted to tell us before she had died, but we had denied her that access to tell us anything concerning a love life or a so-called husband, just before she passed away, she tried to reach out to the family. She said that, if you hear that I have died here in South Africa, you have to know where it all started. But we said, no, no, no. We do not want to hear your story. We have your story too many times and we are sick and tired of your stories. That was when we heard that she fell sick and after she had fallen sick, things started getting really bad. It was like bad luck after bad luck. My other sisters that are there in South Africa, they all lost their jobs in one month so there was no one who could even afford to go and pay her a visit in the hospital where she was admitted in there in South Africa. As for us who are here in Zim with the situation that we have in our country, we could not even manage to think of raising the money so that we can travel to South Africa and to be with her because where were we going to stay? What were we going to eat once we had landed in South Africa? So the only man who was giving us the information, it was that same man who my sister had been staying with in their toxic marriage or a relationship. He used to give us updates and stuff. But after my sister had passed away, that is when we heard the rumors that these two people, they had gone and they had visited a traditional healer. This traditional healer that they had visited. It was a South African traditional healer because they wanted someone who could assist them so that they can have a child together. But it seemed as if this man that my sister was staying with then made a deal with that traditional healer so that he can sacrifice my sister. Why I say so? It is because when my sister's body came back to Zim after she had passed away, that man, we had added him on our family group when we heard our sister was not okay. We asked him to give us updates and he told us that the nurse at the hospital had called him and the nurse had told him to rush to the hospital. So we waited in anticipation. Then he just said in the family group, she is no more. She has died just like that. So we asked him what his plan was because he was a man even though who was not married to our sister but he had stayed with our sister for a very long time. So as a man it was his duty to make sure that our sister's body will be repatriated from South Africa coming back to Zim and our sister didn't even have proper documentation so a lot of money will be required. It was going to be very expensive. You know what that man did, Brother Nashi? While we were busy asking him a lot of questions, he then just exited that WhatsApp family group and he then switched off his phone. So there were some people who were staying in that area where him and my sister were staying when she was still alive. So we sent them to go and check that man. Then they found out that the man had ran away and we do not have any information. The only information that our sister gave us since she was someone who was very secretive and protective over her relationship. So she gave us very little information that is not helpful at all. We only know that this man comes from an area in Zim that is called Chiredzi. We have no way of finding that man. After this man had ran away, the responsibility was now left in our own hands as a family. We sold our livestock, we raised the money, then we went to South Africa, then we collected our sister's dead body and we returned back home with the body. But the funny thing that happened is that the moment that the car that was carrying our sister's remains, as it entered into the compound, then there was one small baby that started talking. It was really amazing because this child, even though at that 
time, this child was somewhere around one year five to one year six months, but the baby had been struggling to speak for a very long time. But from that time when the car that was carrying my sister's remains drove into the compound, that baby started talking as if the baby was an adult. So my brother, when the mother of that baby heard that the child was speaking, she then approached the elderly people in the family and they listened to what the baby was saying. So the baby was saying, open the coffin and after you have opened the coffin, you will see what is inside the coffin. But the voice that was speaking through that child, it was the voice of my sister. A spirit wanted to tell us something. So... When we opened the coffin, we found that inside the coffin, there was everything that the spirit had told us that we were going to find once we had opened up the coffin. My sister had said that there were some charms that had been placed on her body. My sister's spirit confirmed that it was true that at the time when she was still there in South Africa, they had visited a South African traditional healer and they had done some charms, but it seemed as if that man then returned sent back to that traditional healer and when she had fallen sick they came to that hospital and they did some evil charms on my sister's body so the spirit of my sister then said if you open the coffin you are going to see that on my leg there is an anklet that is tied on my leg you have to remove that anklet otherwise if you do not remove that anklet if you bury me with that anklet tied to my leg then my spirit will never be able to rise up again because those are the rituals that they did on my body while least I was lying on my deathbed in hospital. When we opened the coffin, my brother, we saw everything that the spirit had told us everything was there. We saw that on my sister's leg, there was an anklet that was tied there, but the type of this bracelet that was tied on her leg, it is that traditional Zulu anklet that is worn by women. That is what we found on her leg, tied on her ankle. We then removed it just like she had told us. After we had removed it, we then told our sister that we had followed her instructions and we were leaving everything up to her. Then we buried her. So ever since she has passed away, we have not seen anything like that shows that her spirit has been fighting with her enemies, just like she said, because she said, remove that anklet so that I will be able to fight with my own enemies. This is my own story, my brother. All that I want to say to the women out there is that if you are cohabitating with a man, make sure that you inform your relatives. Do not try to keep your relationship as a secret or to try to be protective over the man that you will be dating. It is far much better that you become open with your relatives because in our case, we do not even know where this man is. All that we know is that this man he is from Zim and he comes from an area that is called Chireze. But wait to find him. We do not even know where to start. Dear listeners, right there was a message that I received. Then we had to try and give you this translation.